Okay, so I wanted to go back to last week and uh, on those reflections that we actually very briefly talked about. So you have any, any more comment on this or have you thought about this, reflected about this? Some people are born with great gifts I mean, yeah. because they lived before. And, uh, and so how that affects me is that, like, say, for example, the environment. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if I'm lucky enough to be reborn as a human, I'm going to come back and the environment's going to be a mess. It's, you know, like, it's not just that you can leave it as a mess and it doesn't matter because you'll be dead. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not, you don't want to come back as a human being anymore? No, I said if I'm lucky enough to. You're lucky you. enough to, to be a, okay, good. So, so you're grateful to be a human being this life too? Yes. Good, yeah. good, yeah, it should be. Any more, Any, anybody actually reflected upon this for the past week? Because we went through very fast last week, very quick. So I, I think last week, I said I wasn't here, but some of the things I actually reflect on fairly regularly and often for quite a while now. And yeah, there's there's so many so many things that just unexplainable in my own life if it wasn't for that. It, from my hopes, my dreams, the things I've always wanted. You know, my, my greatest dream from being the smallest child and I was just saying this to our new friend Albert here, was to just walk. Just find the next person to give a hand and then to just keep walking. Oh. And just to keep going, you yeah. know, that just, and, and I could go on for a long time, just these strange little, little, that just make absolutely no sense growing up unless they came from somewhere. Mm. So I, on the one hand, I, I try not to dwell too long on them because by dwelling on something, you don't live now. Exactly. But on the same, I, I try to make sense of them at the same time. Yes. Anybody else? You want to be free from the rebirth? No. You don't want to be free from the rebirth? No, I made all my own vows about always coming back and helping people. <laughs> but nobody left to help, so no, I, I don't want to be free from rebirth. But you can be, you can be rebirth as a human being. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> over and over and over, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the, the free from rebirths, remember, it's not really necessarily the lower, the lower three rebirths, right? So we can have a vow, a wish, um, you know, a, a volition to come back as a human being. Practitioner. That, that, that's what mine, mine is, yes. <laughs> a practitioner. Keep, keep practicing. We, so we are very realistic. I mean, Laura and Jeremy and me, myself are very realistic. So we know that we won't get enlightened this, this lifetime <laughs> and go into Nibbana. And uh, we'll, we'll still have a lot of hard work to do. And uh, we are willing to, to, to do that hard work and keep on working, you know, as, 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 but how can we guarantee that we are going to take a rebirth as a human being? So that's, that's the next thing that you have to ask yourself. So how can I pursue the rest of my life in what manners do I, should I pursue in the rest of my life to make sure that I am really cultivating those good qualities? I think you just said it by, by constantly being aware of, of being mindful, cultivating a proper practice. Yeah, to, to keep cultivating those qualities and those, uh, the, uh, and planting those wholesome seeds that will naturally bring forth that kind of fruit. Right? You cannot expect, oh, I want this kind of fruit, but without, without 
planting those seeds. You have to plant those seeds first. So now the, for the rest of our life, we keep planting those seeds. Okay. So no matter how tough the situation is, as, as, soon as, as, as long as we have the opportunity, as soon as we have the chances, we should try. Just keep trying. Okay. So the one thing is, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to show it to you um, a poem later on. Uh, it's, it's so beautiful. And uh, one thing is, a lot of times, when we are in here, you know, we can say everything. Okay. When we walk out this door and we leave here, it seems that our mind is completely switch around and we forget. We forget those vows so easily. We forget those volitions so easily because the outside world is so powerful over us. And these, these senses sometimes could be so, I mean, not sometimes, it's a lot of times are very misleading. So we allow these messages through these senses to actually mislead us if we do not have that kind of mindfulness. Okay? Okay, all right. So we go to this chapter, The Bringer of Light. And so, uh, so we talk, we're going to look at the first subchapter. It's called One Person. So in this subchapter, it says, somebody arises. And I, 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 I add in is, why? For what reason? For what reason this person arise? So you know who is this person? The Buddha, the Tathagata, right? The enlightened one, the Arahat. So the Buddha arises, or he was born, and why? For what reasons? So in this chapter, on, on just right in, on the first, in the first paragraph, he arises, he came to this human world for the wel welfare of the multitude, for the happiness of the multitude, and we look at for the welfare of the multitude and for the happiness of the multitude. Can we sort of contemplate a little bit on this? Is really the Buddha was born because for the welfare of the multitude, for the happiness of the multitude. But he's gone now. He's gone now. He was born 2,600 years ago. So how can he bring happiness to us? How can he, we, he ensure that we have the right kind of, the, 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 a well-being? The Dharma, the Dharma. The Dharma that he has left us, the words that he has, he has left us in here, in all these other literatures, and the truth that he t has taught us about, about the existence. So we, are we relying on the Buddha to bring happiness or the welfare, or we are just relying on mere words, mere literature? Huh? We, learn, we learn from the words and we need to practice because the words does not do anything for us if yeah. we don't do it. Yeah. Would, the words won't bring you welfare. The words won't be, bring you happiness if you just study them. So, so, you know, just merely knowing the words are not going to, to bring you happiness, not going to bring you a well-being only practicing what he taught. So we are walking his taught, right? We are walking his talks. He's gone, but we are walking his talks. So that is, that is, that is very important. So it's not mere believing, okay? So we really need to constantly remember this. But does it mean that we don't need to have faith in him? We don't need to have faith in the Buddha? Because we well, don't. No, we have to have faith if you do believe in what he has told. 
and then you had to examine yourself whether what he has told is you know, you correct. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 I think that's my favorite teaching is uh, make it well, make it your learn the teaching and then understand it. And if it's not right, find the one what why it's not right. Um, I can't remember the, the story, but when he's sitting in, in the town and they, the, the people come to him and say there's always Brahmins and people coming through telling us that... Kalama Sutta? Is that what it is? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah we'll, go, we'll go into that later on, Kalama Sutta. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, just blind faith to him is not going to help us. Uh, but experiencing the teachings is going to help us because we who experience that we experience it ourselves right so we we eat a, we eat a watermelon we know whether the watermelon is sweet or not sweet so sweetness to you may be different to to, to me i find it very sweet you may find it not sweet so we all have to experience it ourselves and not to impose our experience on others okay no, I tell you this watermelon is so sweet. You say it's not sweet? Come on, it's sweet. Come on. You don't have to fight over that. Because everybody really has is so different. We are so different. Even twins are different and triplets are different. We are so different. Not just we are very different. We are very different at every moment of life. Yesterday the chocolate tastes wonderful. Today the chocolate may taste very bitter. Who knows what your body has changed, how your body has changed, right? So remember that, okay? So and then he said, out of the compassion for the world, for the good, welfare and happiness of divas and humans, that's why he arises. So, so what does it tell you, this? The Buddha, the Buddha does, it, does he really necessarily have to come? Does he really have to come as a Buddha? No. He only come, he only came because he wanted, he wanted the welfare of the, of the, of the multitude. He wanted happiness of the multitude. And because out of compassion for the world, he became Buddha this lifetime for the sake of us. Okay? So so that is the first paragraph what he what he what what, what he said. So it is the Tathagata, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one. This is that one person. So the next one he says the next one he says, he is the best of humans. There's one person arising in the world who is so, so different. The first characteristic, he is so unique. Why do you think that he's so unique? Purity. Purity. And truth. And truth, yeah. Yeah. Nobody talks about that except him. Nobody talks about the truth except him. You say, really? So what is the truth that he talked about? You don't have to think about this, right? <laughs> Come on. Truth of existence. The truth of existence, yeah. The truth of existence. That's what they, what make him unique and also what make him without a peer. So he has no no peer, because he was the only person who was called Buddha at that time. Okay, so nobody. He had no other Buddha's friend in his life. He had no other Buddha's friend. He had a lot of Dharma friends. He had a lot of Dharma students, but he had no friend as the Buddha, the same rank as him. Because why? What do you think? Why? He was enlightened. Yeah, nobody was enlightened. <laughs> nobody was 
was enlightened enough to be enlightened together at, at that in that era where when he was there. Right? And do we really need two Buddha at the same time? We better save one for the future, right? Because they will be talking about the same thing. So we really didn't need two Buddhas at the same time. And becoming a Buddha is so rare, right? When would the next Buddha, Buddha Maitreya come? 56 billion years. Oh gosh, think about that. A lot, a lot of life where, where am I going to be? <laughs> Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. And then without any counterpart, that means nobody is stronger than me, nobody is more wiser than me. And, and here it's incomparable. And you look at all these qualities, let us look at all these qualities, okay? Unequaled. Matchless, unrivaled, and the best of humans. You think, really, are we glorifying him so terribly, extreme? Are we really glorifying him? We are. Are we reasonably glorifying him? He loves the truth, but he loves the Dharma. Yeah. 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 Don't we glorify him? Would respect his Yeah. Respectfully glorifying him. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, uh, if somebody, if somebody is so supreme and gracious. It really deserves our respect and, and, and glorifying, I think. We're not glorifying because of, like, and it's not true, but it is true that he is without a peer, he's without counterpart. He's incomparable, he's unequaled, he's matchless. Why would, why would they say he was the best of humans? The Buddha did not ask, did not tell people that I am without a peer, I am without counterpart, I am incom incomparable, I am unequaled, I am matchless, I am unrivaled, I am the best of humans. He did not say that. These, these are all his, all his best traits here. Why? Why would, why would, why would he be considered as the best of humans? Because and although also he was matchless, nobody can can really compare with him. Why? Because nobody ever ever able to talk about the truth of existence and never be able to actually experience that truth himself and be able to talk and teach about that. And that truth of existence, that means uncon uh, uh, conditioning, I mean, dependent on origination, and also impermanence, this is the truth of existence. And nobody ever talked about that until he. Of course, the, the previous Buddha talked about that, but we did not know about the previous Buddha. So he came and he experienced that in his through his enlightenment uh, 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 path, he experienced that he rediscovered this truth. He did not invent the truth, remember. He did not create the truth. The truth is the truth of existence, including you and me and the universe. He cannot, he cannot create this kind of truth, but he rediscovered it because it was lost among humans. So he rediscovered and he came out to teach again, to show people this is the truth. So, 
So, with seeing, <coughs> seeing this, seeing this, it doesn't mean that we are glorifying Him with a blind faith. You have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I think that Jesus wasn't around the same time as Buddha. No, he, he was later. Oh, okay. I have, like, I don't know who else around that time period existed, but, like, with the word matchless, I kind of, um, in my head, um, contemplate, like, if there was somebody with, like, similar qualities, or, like, if it was a thing where, with the word matchless, it's just meaning on the way that he taught with the Dharma and stuff. Is the matchless, is the way that he taught the Dharma, is the way the Dharma is. Oh, so it's not comparing to compassion or kindness or other things either? No. Oh, okay. No, it's because of the Dharma, the truth. Mm -hmm. So nobody actually ever, ever be able to talk about that. So nobody matches that. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, so one day when the Buddha was walking along the road from the city, and uh, a Brahmin actually asked him, are you a god? He said, no. I'm not a god. And he, and he said, so are you um, a Gandamba? A Gandamba, that means a, a divine musician. He said, no, I'm not. And then he said, are you a Yaka? What is a Yaka? Not Yaka, Nyaka Pan Yaka. It's Yaka. And he said, no. A Yaka means a guardian deity. Guardian deity. He said, no. Are you a human being? He said, no. I'm not a human being. <laughs> and the Brahmin said, okay, you are none of this. So who are you? So who are you? And the, and the Buddha said, if I'm a god, I must have a sense, I must have those sense desires. If I am um, a divine musician, I must have those, those sense Sense, sense desires as a, as a divine musician. If I am a yaka, I, would, I must have so those sense desires of a yaka. And if I have, if I'm a human being, I must have those sense desires of a human being. I have none of this. So I'm none of this. You see, he is completely liberated from his sense desires. Are we? No. We are working on it. We are, <laughs> yeah, we are working on it. Yeah. So, so that's why he said, I'm not a human being like other human beings. He was a human being, but he wasn't a human being like all other human beings who have a they a sense desires. Okay? So that's why he is called the best of humans. Alright? And he is the Tathagata, the Arahat, the perfectly enlightened one. So I want to share with you a poem, not written by me, okay? It's written by Udayin Terra. So so here he said as the as the flower of a lotus arisen in water, blossoms, pure scented and pleasing the mind, yet is not trenched by the water. So we have studied the Lotus Sutra. So we know what lotus flower is. It comes out from mud. It comes out from mud, but it's not by, blemished by the mud. When it, when it opens up, when it blossoms, it's so pretty, it's so clean and so pure. Okay, so that is, that is what they describe to you uh, about the Buddha. In the same way, born in the world, that means the world is the water, the world is the mud. Okay, the Buddha abides in the world, he stays here, and like the lotus by the water, he does not get drenched by the world. This is a beautiful uh, poem um, by uh, Odanyin Tera. And uh, there, is, there is this book of uh, poems which are considered as, um, in India, a really, really 
uh, high literature. It's all Buddhist poems. And uh, if you want to look up uh, on the web, you can find all these poems there. So, so he, 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 even though he was a human being, he wasn't like all other human beings who have to struggle through all the frailties of our human nature, right? And so he, even though he, 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 did, he did go through that human life like we did. He went through old age, he went through sickness, but he wasn't affected by those. Because why? He did not have the sense, sense desires as a human being. Okay. So in the Nikaya, if you want to read the introduction of this chapter, which we did not read, uh, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi said in the Nikaya, uh, pe uh, uh, it offers the two perspective of the Buddha as a person. The first is he was a human being, okay, and uh, he went through the same frailties that we went through. And the second person is, the second perspective is, the Buddha is seen as one who is already prepared, already very well prepared to be enlightened. But yet he chose to come to be enlightened at, at that time, in that space, in that place, to be enlightened. So he, 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 he has made like eons of, 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 of lives of preparations to become enlightened. And, and that, that life that he was born 2,600 years ago, that birth actually allowed him to fulfill that mission. Um, would it affect like hugely the whole idea behind um, his life if he didn't have the option of being a prince or whatever um, was around for him or because he chose to live for a while in poverty and find enlightenment it creates like a equilibrium for us to know that okay like this doesn't matter as much as we think it does for people yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's why he, he actually went through a life like a human being a, a rich life mm -hmm. to start off, yeah. and then he went into six years of really ascetic life, and that's why he said, neither extreme on this spectrum is not going to lead you to enlightenment. Rich, extreme wealth, and extreme poor, minimum, is not going to lead you en to enlightenment. Middle path, middle path, is is the path okay mm -hmm. good okay so what he said is amongst the manifestations of one person is the manifestation of great vision so what kind of manifestation he carry is great vision so he actually saw that truth that we, 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 we will never be able to understand if we were not taught about that right and great light and great radiance. And remember, remember you have studied the, the Lotus Sutra, and great light and great radiance. You see all the Buddha statue that actually show the embodiment of, of compassion and wisdom. In that, in that statue, a lot of time, um, people, people would, um, would use gold, or the people would, would put, uh, put something behind the Buddha. It seems like an aura. So it's actually symbolized that radiance, that light. That means that means light travels, right? Light travels. And light brings brightness. And light actually radiates. You can see if the sun goes through the peers through the clouds in the morning or you know if uh, thick clouds and you can see the, ray, the rays is like radiating from the sky, all like that, right? 
this radiance, that means this person has so much brightness in him that actually, you know, he radiates the brightness out, the light out, and shines into all the dark corners in the world. Okay? And then the six things unsurpassed, and we will talk about the six things unsurpassed, and the realization of the four analytical knowledges. So I bet you don't you don't know what are these six things and what are these four analytical knowledges, okay? And then the realizations of the fruit of knowledge and liberation. The last one we, we just we just need to know the words of those those four stages of, of, of enlightenment. So what are these six things? That means the six superpowers. So the higher powers, the first one is the higher powers. What are these higher powers? It's like walking on water and going through walls. You've seen the movie The Ghost? No? Oh, you're way younger than me. <laughs> okay, you, you go, go back and look up on the YouTube, you may find it and watch it, okay? So you can see it goes go through walls, go through stainless steels and travels. That's one one of the higher power. I tell you, you don't 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 you try to think this is impossible. It's possible. It's really possible. A a a, a Bodhi Dhamma, the monk who actually travels from India and bring the 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 Chan meditation to China. He crossed the river. Remember, I told you the story. In one, what's that? What's that weed called again? Um, something, rush, bull rush, bull rush. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bull rush. Oh, good memory, bull rush. He tr he stand on one, one bull rush and travel across the river. Even without a bull rush, he could travel across the river. His superpower. Why? Because at that time, this whole body feels so light. The four elements, especially the earth element, is completely dissolved. You experience that in meditation, right? So in meditation, when you when you experience that dissolution, that that that, that, that dissolution, don't just don't just get up and try to walk across the river. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you probably will drown because. It, you are not in that mental state. Once you try to walk, you can't walk. All right? Okay. And the second one is divine ear. That means they can hear anything, anything far, far away. I have, I have, I have had friends who told me that, oh, over there, there was a car accident. I said, you're crazy. <laughs> And really, there was a car accident, and he heard it. While we were talking, he heard it. He said, no way. He said, I hear things. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he told me that he hear people gossiping. <laughs> but he, I said, wouldn't that be very dis disturbing to you? It, he said, it was in the beginning. It was in the beginning. but." Then he, he knew that he was born with this kind of power. And uh, he said, then I just, I just accept it. I just accept it. And then and it's just like a background noise. So I said, oh, you can, you can hear us talking about you. We better don't talk about you, right? He said, ah, you better tr don't. <laughs> so, and mind penetrating power, that means, that means what? So whatever you think about, he knows. So they know, okay. So um, it's, it's quite scary sometimes. My sifu has that very strong power. My sifu has that very strong power. And oh, you don't want him to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> With like negativity though, like, when you hurt yourself, you look like it was the first start, but like with somebody that um, has that type of capability, 
um, does that mean that they kind of feel or recognize the pain and they don't, they're not going to go, oh, don't do that, like right away, but like they want you to understand your own feeling towards that first? You mean that person? Yeah. That person, a lot of times, I would recommend them not to tell anybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep your mouth zipped. <laughs> Because it's none of your business. Mm, yeah. It's everybody's individual's karma. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes, sometimes, if we know that if we could say something, if we could say something to uplift that person, to help, to support, to encourage, you know, that we should do it, but not tell that, oh, you know, I have this power and I know that you're going through this. No. Once you start to do this, you are falling into the trap of ego. Okay, don't do this. Even though you have this power, don't do this, okay? And then re retro connection, what does it mean? That means he is able to remember the former lives. Question. I don't know how well it can be answered. How do you know what you've seen to be real or not when it comes to that? What do you mean? Well, I've, I've had, I don't know what else to call it, but it's like a visions of myself in, in other life. But how would you Oh, I see. Oh, how, how would you know? Oh, you know. A delusion, like it, you know right away. Okay. You know. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, okay. So. That's. No, at that time you know right away. Oh, that's me. But is it was a man, or it was if you're a man, or it was it would be a woman, or it would be a child. That's me. You know, <laughs> you don't need others to tell you no, right away. And divine eye. They can see people walking around who have died. You 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 have this word of clairvoyance. Is that is that is that right? Clairvoyance, yeah, yeah. So um, and then the, you you see those people, okay. And sometimes this 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 person with divine eyes, they could be very emotional. They could be very um, distracted because yeah. My friend, daughter yeah. can can see yeah. this, yeah. It used to really freak her out. Yeah. If she'd be driving down the road at night. Yeah, yeah, no, you're driving down the highway and you okay. see people crossing the, the highway. You, you think that you're going to bump into them. She's, I think, 35 now or so. She comes out of them? She, no, it's just totally, she doesn't talk about it, but it's just a total, you know. It's still there? Yeah, just, she, yeah. she's totally accepted. She knows what's going on. She has accepted, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the more you accept it, and then you don't talk about it, gradually this, this power may, may, be, may fade out. It can fade out. She understands. Yeah, but good. You know, yeah. without. Yeah. She's reasonable yeah. enough to understand. Good, 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 good. So these five powers uh, can be easily possessed by any beings, right? like not, not, not any beings, not a dog or whatever, but uh, beings who are dead, ghosts, you can call them ghost spirits and human we if we actually um, um, have a practice very deep meditation we can develop any of these two very very calm mind we can develop any of these but the last quality the last knowledge no we can't this knowledge of the extinction of mental intoxicants that means the karma this this only the Buddha had only a Buddha had okay so so these, these, these are the first five powers are developed through, um, it can be developed through meditative uh, concentration. Then the, the last one can only be obtained through, through um, enlightenment. Okay. Because the last one is the end of all sufferings and no more ignorance. So, so this is, um, we, as long as we still have sufferings, as long as we still carry karma with us, 
And as long as we are still ignorant, then we will never be able to develop this, um, this power. Okay. So even, even the Buddhas possess these six powers, but the Buddha always said, you don't indulge in these powers. Because indulging in these powers are going to distract you completely away from the goal, reaching the goal of enlightenment. Because you will fall into the trap of craving, wanting to know, wanting to do things, wanting to hear, wanting to see, wanting to so like show off, right? I mean, wouldn't you show off if you have a divine ear, divine eyes? Superpowers going through the wall, let me show you, right? So, you know. Um, with divine ear or like some of the other ones, like I've had some family members um, unsteadily pass away. Like, would it, and I'm not sure if like with spirits or stuff like that, I don't know, but um, can you be hurting yourself if trying to attain these things can be destructive or if you already have these things it kind of just on your own discretion with the knowledge of the Dharma to be able to help yourself out? Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you if you have these things and you indulge in them mm -hmm. and that then you are you are you will eventually hurt yourself. Not hurt as the like hurt, but you actually start to create more craving. You fall in the trap of craving. So then the darts happen? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the darts too, the second dart. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so. We cannot finish the four analytical knowledges. <laughs> it's already an hour. <laughs> so you see, likely and possibly. So we hardly finish one, one sub-chapter. <laughs> you see? It's, I mean, it's nice to actually go deeper like this to understand a little bit more rather than just read it through. But reading through is actually very uh, uh, helping you to remember a lot of things, right? Let us uh, dedicate our merits. May these blessings extend to all that we with all the other living beings together will attain the Buddha way. May more and more people will encounter the words of the Buddha, study them, practice them, and help themselves to liberate themselves from all those entanglements, unhappiness, dissatisfactions, sufferings, miseries, and become free, happy, and peaceful.